the entirety of the West Bank and the entirety of the Gaza Strip are under occupation. They have never ceased to be under occupation. They are the, under the complete and total control of the Israeli military. You cannot enter, you cannot leave. You cannot import, you cannot export. You cannot fly over, you cannot travel by sea or fish without the permission of the Israeli security forces. You cannot register a child, you cannot bury somebody, you cannot do anything of any importance without the approval of the Israeli occupation. This includes Gaza. Even Gaza, from which the Israeli army has withdrawn, from which the Israeli settlers were removed, is still, from the outside, under occupation. It is under the complete, total control of the Israeli military, as is the, Gaza, as is the West Bank, into which the Israeli military carries out regular incursions. So we, we have been given an entirely false, an entirely mistaken impression that there is some kind of symmetry as between two you know, more or less equal parties. Simply not the case. There is a party that occupies, that controls, that is a sovereign state, that has international representation, and so on and so forth. And there is a party that is under occupation and that has absolutely no sovereignty, no jurisdiction, no authority over the territories for which it's nominally responsible, which is to say the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. And to understand the fighting, to understand the internal conflict that the Palestinians have been engaged in, you have to understand this. They're operating within this pressure cooker of an occupation. They're not operating in their own stage, in their own state, in their own territory. It belongs to them. I mean, it's not to say it doesn't, it's not theirs, but it is not a territory which they control. It's important to understand that you cannot uh, hold an entire people down by force. Um, you can destroy it. I mean, it can be physically destroyed. You have had societies and countries that have been physically destroyed. You've had cities that have been physically destroyed. Six million people were destroyed by the Nazis in World War II, Jews. Many millions of others were destroyed. You can do that, but if you don't go to that level, you cannot, by force, achieve what the United States and Israel are trying to do. This is all immensely unjust. Forty years of occupation. Forty years of occupation. I was reading an article, a, a letter the other day, I can't remember where, and somebody says, the Palestinians blame the, quote, occupation, unquote, for that. We can't let them get away with that. This is an occupation. Every important decision in the life of every Palestinian living in the West Bank, in the Gaza Strip, in Jerusalem, for the past 40 years, two full generations, has been taken by corporals and sergeants and generals of the Israeli army. Every single important decision in the lives of four million people for 40 years has been taken by the Israeli security establishment. They have absolutely no choice in an enormous range of things that we would never accept not having for ourselves. It's not just self-determination, though that, of course. It's not just having a state. It's not just being free of soldiers. It is a huge range of decisions. Can I go to the hospital? Can I go to the next village? Can I go to school? Can I send my kids to university? Can I transfer money? Can my cousin come from Amman? Every important decision in the life of every Palestinian for 40 years has been made by generals and sergeants and, and security officials of the Israeli state. Every single decision. That is unacceptable. That is unjust. And we have to hammer that home every single time we speak about it. Anybody who looks at the results of the policy of not negotiating with the, regi the Cuban regime over the last 40 odd years can see how brilliantly unsuccessful that has been. Obviously engagement is the only way to deal with issues. Obviously. Uh, if there were an actual attack on the United States, that would be a different issue. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about potential threats to the security, maybe of somebody sometime in the future. Why can that not be talked about? I don't, I don't understand it. And I think that that should be hammered, because, partly because there's a very important element, even in the, in the rather stolid, turgid, very unimaginative foreign policy establishment of the United States, which understands the foolishness of the current policy. Let me tell you something, folks. Winning elections is not some kind of platonic process. I, I lived in Chicago for 17 years. <laughs> and I can tell you things about democratic elections. Uh, which would turn those of you whose hair is not white, white. Um, politics is an ugly business. Democratic politics can be an ugly business. And Fatah knew how to play that game and it knew, knew how to play all kinds of other games. It knew how to play the patronage game, the jobs for the boys game, uh, Chicago stuff, not things that are that hard to understand. Anybody who knows anything about politics knows what I'm, I'm talking about. 